Okay, so as we're laying inside our fabric, I like to start and end class right here. Just letting our breath flow really good, really relaxed. Gives us a chance to just find presence, a chance to be with our bodies. And I personally love to connect with a, a little intention for each week. So the intention I was thinking of for today we just had the summer solstice. So leading up to this point, we've had more and more and more and more light building up every single day. And so that's very much a yang energy between yin and yang. Yang is the higher activity one. It's, it's light, it's activity, it's doing quality. And from this point on to the winter solstice, we're gathering more and more and more night every day. We're getting darker and darker. So from this point to the rest, the, the second half of the year, we're more of a yin energy, going more and more internal. We're focused on some of these deeper qualities of self-care, healing, these kinds of things. So since we're right here, kind of in the middle of the yin and yang, this week of the solstice, the idea that I was thinking of for today is including some yin activities and some yang activities. So some things will be a little bit more strengthening and other things will just be sitting in a good, comfortable stretch and just getting to be right there. So that'll be kind of the thing that carries us into our class, um, having this energy of both the yin and the yang. So with that to lead us on, let's take some nice initial stretches for our body. Let's begin to stretch the arms all the way to the back wall. And then let the shoulders start to go a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. Just a long lateral feeding. Beautiful. So spine back through the center. Let's take our right knee into the chest, put the hands around that knee, pull it in. This is helping to open up the hip flexor for a second. Sometimes I'll do nice little ankle rolls too, loosening up some tightness that might be there. When this hamstring feels ready to stretch, let the leg go up to the sky. Get a good chance just to continue to try to straighten deeper and deeper. Take a good inhale. Exhale. We'll take one last little stretch here. This gets us into the hip. It's kind of like a pigeon pose. You take this right foot, hook it on this back left side. So the side that's kind of close to our ear. Hook it all the way to that back left edge. Once it's hooked, continue to slide the shin. So the knee is swiveled out to the side. The ankle area is hooked. Just slide that shin in. This should start to get us into the hip. First, nice strength. The breath is almost there. There you go. That's the Give our body a couple of really good deep breaths right here. I like to take it a little bit slower toward the beginning of class. This gives us time for our muscles to start to. <laughs> Decide, okay, I guess I can be with you today. I guess I can do these things. Let's take one more good breath in. Nice exhale. Start to free up this right leg. Sometimes I'll give it one more stretch up to the sky. And dropping it all the way down, second side, the left knee comes into the chest. Give it that good hug.
Maybe some toe circles. <clears throat> when you're ready to stretch hamstring up to the sky, let this left leg have that stretch. Take one more good inhale. Exhale. Hook the, the left heel over to the back right. Slide the shin in. Another good breath in, out, like stretches up to the sky, give it another pull, and as it drops down, keep your legs inside for a moment, and grab onto each end of the fabric, so that our torso can start to sit up. Once we're sitting up, continue to let your hands slide forward for the feet, it's a nice stretch over those two legs. Getting into a nice low back stretch. What we'll do is slide the heels closer to the glutes and then letting the knees go wide. Get the elbows and even maybe the shoulders past the front end. So once you're here, chin goes down to the chest. Clasp the hands together. Take the hands right behind the back of the head. So it has us kind of curling into this nice little tight ball. A really good stretch for all those muscles of the whole back. Let's take another good inhale. Let's help. Free out the hands. Shoulders can go free, feet can go off the front end. And here, let's take our uh, diaper wrap inversion. So it's pretty easy. Just keep your thumbs, put the, put the thumbs on the back end. So this helps you get the fabric down to about the back side of the pant line. It's too high, it tends to be more uncomfortable for people. Pushing the fabric down, from there we lean about halfway back and put it back on. Good. That made it so that the fabric stayed where we wanted it to go. So then the last step to get to the inversion from here, legs go wide, that means that you won't fall out. And then wrap the ankles. As soon as the ankles are wrapped around the fabric, you're welcome to let the hands drop down. Make sure the feet are wrapped first though. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So the idea is letting the back muscles just relax. This gives the discs of the spine lots and lots of space. So just note, some people have greater tolerances for inverting than other people, especially if this is kind of one of your first inversions in a while. So don't feel like you have to stay as long as anybody else. Just kind of listen to your body. You're welcome to stay plenty long. Some people, this is the reason why they come to aerial classes to invert. But when your body knows it's time to come out, just grab onto the fabric, gently unwind the feet, and don't get 
absolutely up to you how long to be. Some people might come up and back down a couple of times, just kind of getting that practice at the transition. Yep, sometimes we come out to readjust exactly where the fabric is, makes it more comfortable. So note, those that are up and are not wanting to go back down again, we always do a little recovery pose after inverting. That gives our head and our blood pressure plenty of time to kind of reset. So the restorative pose here is hooking your elbows and just letting the shoulders sink their way forward. So it's called a floating child pose. So not only is it a really good back stretch, but it's just an easy, restful place. When the head drops down, it lets the back of the neck have a good stretch too. So some people let the head go left and right a few times. Take another good inhale. Exhale. Here, let's start to transition to the next pose. So we're sitting up. Let's head to a nice twist to each side. So first, let's grab onto the fabric that's toward the back door. Your shoulder is opening up to your back wall, that mountain side. Start to open up that arm, feeling the pec stretch open, the whole arm stretch open. Sometimes it's even nice to circle with the number on the back side of the head. So the spine have a good chance to twist. One more inhale. Exhale, release this side, we'll put the twist to the other direction. So bunch up the fabric toward the front door side. And your back shoulder opens up to that direction or circles around the head. One more breath right here. With that exhale, return your spine to face forward. What you're gonna do is re-grip onto the fabric that faces you into the center of the room, into face toward me. That'll help you see better. So grab back onto the fabric that's to that direction. From there, yep, yeah, so into me, good. From there, lock your arms straight. That'll give you a little bit of space. The hip that just start, got it lifted, you'll need to swing that leg up and over. Sometimes it's funky the first time, so just do the best that you can do. You made it. Good, and just keep on practicing. Just keep on shifting if you're still working on it. Those that are here, we're gonna take a little hip stretch. So the leg that is toward the mirror side, take that ankle shin area and place it back up onto the fabric in front of you. So this is gonna get us into that hip. Note if the hip is really tight and you need to make it less intense, lock your arm straight. That'll take some intensity away. If you want to make it deeper, let the leg continue to sink toward the heart or even hug around the leg to pull it in tighter. One more stretch for this side. Take this, the same foot that you were just working on. Take the arch of the foot onto the gathered fabric. Once the arch is up, slide the foot up as straight as you can get it. Similar to the last pose, if you lock the arm straight into the fabric, that will lessen the intensity. If your hamstring's pretty open and you want to start backing the hands away, that'll make it deeper and deeper. So you choose the intensity.
Take one more good inhale here. Nice exhale. And start to release this leg. Second shin comes up. So again, you can maybe hug around the shin if you want to make it deeper. You can straighten the arms if you want to make it less intense. Another good inhale. <laughs> Exhale, arch of the foot onto the fabric. Start to slide the leg up. By the way, I, I like to turn the toes out. That's much more comfortable than trying to do internal rotation. Good. So choose your intensity. Maybe the arms are helping to take some intensity out. Your hands start to back away. That makes it much deeper. Good inhale, good exhale, bring this leg to the mirror side, shift both legs to that side, we should be facing forward, our hips will have to do a couple of scoop left to right, left to right, until we're not off center anymore, good. So here we're going to take our next inversion. This one's a lot of people's favorite inversion. This one's called Vampire Pose. So with Vampire Pose, what we need to do, some people are visual learners, by the way, so if you want to watch the whole thing first, that's fine. If you want to take it with me step by step, that's fine. I'll repeat it for those that are visual learners. So what you're doing for Vampire Pose is taking the fabric that's behind you, Take one thin layer over your shoulder like a cape. All the excess needs to be brought down to our waist because if you have all the extra at the neck, it's going to push on the neck uncomfortably. So all the excess is brought down to my waist. I lean back. And now I need that excess to be brought down to my feet. So I'll step my feet in, lift the hips up, and then straighten the legs and that shift it all down to my feet. So last steps to get into here, I make sure my shoulders are still safe, nice and covered. I grab my hands up left and right. The feet come up. It needs to go to the spot that you just gathered up with your hands. So it's a lot, a lot easier to grip your feet there. There's a little notch right after your heel in. So that little notch, you push into the fabric. So it's turned out, it just wraps your weight upside down. Pull down your pose, okay? So doing it again, so take the fabric that's behind you like a cape. It has to be a complete covering over your shoulders like a cap sleeve. Your elbows squeeze everything extra into your waist. Start to lay back. Once you've laid back, step the feet in. Lift the hips up to straighten the legs out. That should take all the excess down. Good, hands grip up left and right. Feet come up, grabbing that spot that we just gathered, the toes turn out. Then we press into the fabric to rise up. <laughs> Let me come by. <laughs> so we've got a little bit too much here, so keep our right fabric down. Stay here. Work down. Okay, let's go ahead and pick up left and right. Your feet have to pike up. It's okay if it's inside or outside the fabric, whatever is the easiest. So pike the feet up above you. It needs to come all the way to the spot where the hands are. Back all the way to the back. All the way down. So. No, not okay. No, not okay. No, not okay. No. Perfect. 
press into the feet, right? You want to try it? Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 So I'll repeat it again, but my rule with inversions is it's you listening to your body. So don't feel like it's a competition that you have to go as long as anybody else. All I want you to do is listen to your body and your body will kind of help you know um, when that good amount of time is. It's not too much, not too little. So those that are still upside down, keep on enjoying it. I'm not gonna rush you out. Those that are happy, you're ready to be relaxed, feel free to take this little mini Shavasana for a little while, just laying all the way back. Got one or two more that I'm giving them just a little bit more time for this down here, folks. Good. So those that are in our Shavasana, this is just a really good chance for your blood pressure to come back to normal. So all you're doing is just breathing and listening to your body. At some point, sooner or later, you'll start to feel ready to just come up to an easy seated place. So when your head and your body feels like, okay, I think I would be good to move on at this point, that's when you'll start to kick your feet off the front and come back up to sit. But don't rush, like, don't ever feel like you're rushed out of these recovery poses. It takes our body just a little bit of time to adjust, especially when your, your body's not used to going into inversions. Those that are sitting up, just keep on enjoying that floating child pose for a couple more breaths. Got a few more that are just continuing to recover. Giving them just a few more breaths just to ease up eventually. And again, don't ever feel rushed. Sometimes some people just have to stay a couple of bonus minutes. And that's okay, we could always move on and you just relax for a little while. That That is always an option. Sometimes it's like your body gets close to that borderline where it's like, I'm not dizzy, I'm not nauseous, but I just need to not move for a little while. So that's always fine to just rest for a little bit. So if you feel like you're in this good spot where your body's about ready to move on, we're gonna start working on some standing poses. So you'll grab onto the fabric on each side and then just lift the hips up and out. That makes it a bit more safe than trying to face dive forward when the toes can't touch the ground. Good. Let's take the fabric all the way out in front of us for out. Just an easy grip on the hand of the fabric. Just start to let the hips go back, the upper body goes forward. Give our body some time right here. So sometimes there's gentle little movements that your body really wants to take. Sometimes it's like a cat cow rounding up and down. Sometimes it's just like a wiggling of the hips left and right. And it's easy to visit those low back areas. Just give it a couple of good breaths, whatever that's feeling good for our body right now. So let's take another really good inhale, exhale, 
start to bend the knees, roll our spine up. And then take your right ankle inside the fabric. We'll take some time to help that leg just gradually get more and more limber. So first and foremost, just slide the hands down. This gets our heart closer to the thigh and it gets us right into that hand. Just take a couple of good breaths right here. By the way, higher grip is easier for balance. So if you feel like you're off balance, like you could fall over, always go higher and that'll help you save yourself. Good. So spine up. You can either keep the right hand on or if you can balance without, that's fine too. All together, we're all going to swing this right leg as wide as it can go. Return it back forward. Take five more of those. Five. Four. Three. Two. One, when the hands grip back on, you can either take the same thing we did a moment ago, heart down, or you can take more of a split action. Hands slide up, start to sink your whole body weight forward. Another good inhale, exhale, squeeze your inner thighs together. This takes yourself over your standing leg again. Gripping just onto this left strand, turn your left toes to the left. So gripping on that left strand, the right hand is going to slide down, left hand slides up. So it's a really open chest like a triangle pose. You should be having heart open to the back door. That's it. Deborah, go ahead and switch the grip. Switch the grip. Um, the other hand goes up, get it. Oh. And you're welcome. So your choice if you also want to see forward to splits, whatever feels good. And if you went forward at all, take your weight over standing leg. Just the right hand holds on. We're gonna do one more 90 degree turn. This will face you to the back wall. So start to bend the knee down. Put one hand on each side. Usually I'll hop a little bit closer to the fabric. And then let's take a nice easy quad stretch. So sinking your weight into the fabric, you just lean backwards. Because that right knee is pointing down, you should be in that quad stretch already. Love this one for how easy it is, but yet how deep it goes. <laughs> Good. So take your weight back over your standing leg. This one sometimes people have to use the wall, but you're going to try to move with balance to get the hands down to the floor. Once you've got two hands down, straighten both legs as long as they can go. And then you'll walk your hands backwards into another split action. So my hands walk as far back as they can. Yeah, got it. Oh. <laughs> I like I can do that. <laughs> Okay, so now hands walk to the reverse side of the mat. It's like a downward facing dog. Your right foot is inside to shake it free. Come into full downward facing dog. Walk your hands to your feet or your feet to the hands. Forward fold. Take a good inhale to rise. Hey, 
Okay, come back behind the fabric. Take our next side. So left leg in. So first we start off with just heart sliding down, getting closer and closer to that thigh. Nice to start off not too intense. Another good inhale. Exhale, torso up. This is one where we're going to swing our leg open and closed. So if you want to grip on, that's fine. If you can balance without, that's fine. Let's take it wide and forward. Another five, four, three, two. One, good, staying forward, either take the same action sliding down or take a split, sliding up, sink your weight forward. One more breath here, in and out. Weight over standing leg, grip just onto the right side, turn your toes to the right, right hand up, left hand down, this opens up the chest to the front door, so you could be perfectly happy right here, or you could sink some more weight forward like a side split. One more inhale. Exhale, weight over standing leg. Just the left hand stays. You take one more 90 degree turn to the back ball, and then each hand grabs each side. A little hop backwards. Help with balance. Bond stretch, so just lean your weight backwards. So you're going directly to lean into the back. Another good inhale, exhale, standing up on your own, try to work your hands all the way down to the floor, use that back ball if needed, once you're there, both legs try to straighten and walk the hands as far back as you can. Inhale, exhale, walk your hands until you're in a three-legged dog, then shake your foot free, pull down our face dog, to forward fold. If you get an inhale to rise up. And hands to the heart. Good. So come back to the start spot right behind the fabric. I'm gonna do another inversion. There you go. So this one is a hip cake. So take the fabric across the hip bones. Bones is much more comfortable than the fleshy guts of the intestines. So keep it right across the skeleton. Walk forward to take any slack out. And then start to bend at the waist, bring your thumbs down to the floor. 
Once you're there, take several steps back until your hips are back into the plank. Just like how it sits. Should get like a downward facing dog shape. So sometimes massage across the hips and hands here. If you feel like you can handle it, maybe the toes start to lift. Maybe we hug around the shift. If that massage across your hip fascia area is really intense, so that it gets better eventually. Same rule as any inversion. Don't feel like you have to be as long as anybody else. If it's enjoyable, keep on feet here. If you need to just drop down to the down dog shape, that's fine. At any point that you know to come out, that's also fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's always my rule with the third. Settling into the shape, you can see how enjoyable this one is. It's another favorite of a lot of people. There might be a few of you that are about ready to come out. So you just take your weight over your legs, slowly roll your head up. And then with the fabric behind you, you just lean backwards. But again, those that are hanging for a bit longer, this is okay. Good. So it looks like we're all about up. So you just have the fabric on your shoulder blade area. Just give your head some time to lean back. Uh, some of you are already kind of working toward one of my favorite things here. I like to plant the feet nice and wide. And sometimes I'll sway a little bit or even bend one knee and let my body sway really far over. The other side. Beautiful. So you're listening to your head. When your head knows it's safe to be back upright, back yourself up until you're standing on your own. And the fabric's out in front of us again. Here, what we'll do are some of the same poses we did just a moment ago, and we'll add in a few bonus ones that get us into some strengthening. So right ankle inside. Take it first to the stretch, either hands slide down or hands slide up splits. Good. Weight comes back. Grip right hand onto the left strand. Start to work on your complete 180, bending that knee behind. Grab one hand on each strand, hop until you're under the line. Then this one stands your pose. So one hand on each side of the fabric, point the elbows to the back wall, that'll keep the shoulders engaged. And then from here, start to lean forward and kick the foot into the fabric to create our dancer's pose. Good. Come back up. Let's take that quad stretch for a couple of reps. Just take that. Good. Weight over standing leg. This is one you can try to balance without, or if you need to grip, reset your hands to the low back area from behind. What we're doing is some lunges. So the back, the, the leg that's in the fabric goes backwards from lunging into the fabric and squeeze everything up to come back up to stand. So if you're doing those lunges, grip or no grip, let's back seven and up. Six. 
Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Drop the hands down, splits. Lock the hands all the way to the opposite end. Lower onto that left feet. You've got two options to work on the core. Option one, just work that left knee to try to go up and down. Option two, step that left foot all the way into the fabric and then curl the knees in and out. You're gonna choose however many options you have that steady control with your, your core. Your breath is steady. Whenever you're satisfied, you'll have your left leg down going into position. Guys, let's give it two or three more good, slow breaths right here. Bring up to hands, drop this right knee out. Give my hands a couple of whacks, left and right. We'll work our way to standing, so maybe a down dog. To forward fold. And rising up. Good work. One more side, left leg in. Either slide down, split. Slide down if just for heart close to thigh, or slide hands up, split. Okay, weight over standing leg. The left hand grabs onto the right side for safety. Start to bend the knee down, complete 180. One hand over each shoulder, hop back, dancers. So engage the elbows to point to the back wall. Lean forward, kicking the foot into the fabric to create that lift. Good, you're there. Quad stretch, so coming back up, just lean backwards. Good. If you're going for the lunges, we're taking seven, baby hands are completely free, baby hands start from under. When you're ready, take it out, seven, and call up, six. Five, four, three, two, one, and splits. And the floor, stick it backwards. Walk the hands to the opposite end, dropping the right knee down. Your option, either lift the right knee up and down, or step both feet into the fabric, take some planks. Sprout in, knees straighten out. Keep the breath flowing, though we never hold the breath, we're strengthening. You choose how many reps until you're ready for the right leg to be down.
One more inhale. Exhale. That same process. Come up to stand. Lift up. Out. Maybe a couple wags of our tail. Nice down dog. Forward fold. And rising up. Good. So let's take one last inversion. This is super close to the one that we did at the beginning where the fabric was behind us. We had the legs wide and then wrap the feet. This is the same motion. Um, in fact, if you need, if this one's too hard and you need to go back to that other one, you'll just come back to sit inside and do the same thing. But if you're wanting to try this one, what we do is we take our thumbs in only. It's not all the fingers, just the thumbs. It's the palm that's going to lock the fabric right across the sacrum or right across the butt crack area. If it goes too much higher, it becomes uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Lock it in place firmly there. One foot steps back. Then both these to start to lean your weight back. This locks it in place right where you want it to go. So then tiptoe forward on your palm line. Otherwise, you'll start to swing. Then kind of simultaneously hands up, knees wide. And then wrap the feet. Once you've got the wrap, Oh, you go wide. There you go. So once you got the feet wrapped, then you're safe to let go. <laughs> yep, just like that. You got it. You, you've got it, except for you're on the inside. So you're not going outside. Outside, take a wide of your feet. Super, super wide. Oh then bend your knees around. Yep. Oh. And you're still wrapped in your own back. Yeah. Yes. Nope. 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 Okay, you're gonna do a flip that way. Sway. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and lean back, or you can lean them. It's not that too big of a spot to you. That'll be our. Right. Now, those that come up, like those that are hanging, feel free to hang. I'm not rushing you out. Those that are out, you can just take that same restorative pose until you're ready for Shavasana. Take all the steps, like waving the fabric out, all that good stuff to put on it. Hmm. If ever you need a grounded Shavasana too, that's fine. You could always just lay on the, on the floor instead. Yep, just like that. Step on. Super safe, super far, and then just lean back into the fabric. <laughs> I think what happened for you is you didn't fit quite enough groups. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I can remember the whole process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wave it. I did that. And then hook your thumbs. So turn up to face the mirror, hook your thumbs. Oh. Then take five grips. Oh, five grips. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Otherwise, that happened, then you don't have enough to get to your feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got it. You guys are awesome. Again, just keep on enjoying yourself until you're ready for Shavasana. Take all those steps, wave it out. Hook your thumbs, five grips. Thumbs, five grips. Five grips. Yep. And on it. See, you're already more comfortable with the fabric. <laughs> <laughs> Laying back for the Shavasana when you're there sooner or later. Shavasana is kind of the most yin we get in our practice. So again, as we're heading toward eventually the second half of the year toward winter solstice, 
just kind of let your body recognize the the benefit of slowing down and even stopping activity altogether like we do with our shavasana. Just letting the breath relax, letting our body integrate all the benefits of the activity that we have. All you have to do for the next few minutes is just let those good deep inhales go in, release the exhales. We'll take the next few minutes to start traveling out. So sometimes it's nice to just begin with a good deep inhale. Exhale. Maybe you want to stretch the arms all the way to the back wall, letting those shoulders go left and right a few times. Sometimes people love to take a fetal position here. So what you do is you keep your body long, but you roll onto one hip. So one hip is stacked on top of the other hip. Once you're in that long side of leaning place, then you can curl in like a tight little ball. Arc the spine all the way back. Just taking it back and forth. Usually I'll do two or three to one side and then I'll flip around to the other side, helping to keep my spine even. So 
Another couple of breaths, evening out the spine. Then eventually we'll start working our way up toward a seated place. So we'll start to pick the feet free off the front. Eventually use the hands to rise up. Good. Left hand at the heart. Take a moment to connect up towards and one more time. So this is that idea of yin and yang, balance, balancing in our life, the high activity, the low activity, the times of more light, the times of more darkness. And so perhaps since our society is so yang, so activity-based and goal-oriented, perhaps it's nice as we're heading toward greater and greater darkness every day, maybe the second half of the year we focus a little bit more on the yin side, Slowing down, the healing, the recuperating, the self-care. So with a little bit more yin to head us into our weekend, let's wrap up the time we shared together today with the sound of oh, deep in hell now. We be filled with light, happiness, and peace. Thomas.